and the top. Something or somebody that is top notch. Number one, they are a very rare individual. They have some distinctive qualities about themselves. It's just like a pair of shoes. You, you have some shoes, they are just rare. You, you're not going to find them everywhere. Some articles of clothing, they're just rare. And their designs are very distinct. Something or someone that is top notch is special or priceless. It's, it's, it's hard to put a, a normal value on it because it's so different or special. When you go, when you go to the mall and you see people selling jewelry in these little kiosks, if you notice, the jewelry is very shiny. But you have to ask yourself, why, why I don't see no safe? Why I don't see no, no, no bars to try to keep me from easily getting the jewelry? It's usually because it's not high grade jewelry. But when you go into a real jewelry store, they'll have things on display out front. But in the back of the store, they got the top notch stuff. They got the stuff that's priceless went to this one particular jewelry store and was looking at the timepieces. They don't even call them watches. They call them timepieces. And I was looking at the, the timepiece, and she said, oh, no, these are just for display. We got the real pieces back in the, in the safe. See, whatever is considered top notch is valuable, is very very priceless. And number three, something of someone that is top notch is noticeably above average. It's just not like everything or every or everybody. It's noticeably above average. You can look at it and tell that right there, that's quality. That's top notch. I, I, I see why those particular garments cost what they cost because of the detail and how it was handmade. How many in here can understand what it means to see something or somebody that's top notch? Let me see those hands. When it comes to things, young people, that are top notch, let me give you a quick life lesson. You should accept that you have the ability to be top notch at whatever it is you do. It's your choice if you want to be average. But you have the ability to be top notch in whatever it is that you do. If you want to settle, that's on you. But God has given you the capacity, the ability to be and to produce cutting edge results or top notch results. It doesn't matter if we're talking about work, study. It doesn't matter if you talk about being artistic, whether you are drawing writing music, dancing, you have the ability to produce top-notch results. Number two, I need you to understand that you should adhere to folk that are on a higher level than you. When somebody is showing you that they have reached a top-notch level, you, you should be to the point to where you are able to soak up game that's coming from them. You should be able to adhere to what they're trying to teach you and then prayerfully 
Ask God, how can you apply it to your life so you can level up? You have to learn how to adhere from folk that are on a higher level than you. And thirdly, what's most important when it comes to a quick life lesson about something or someone being top notch, you should always appreciate somebody that is producing top notch results. You should always appreciate it. When you go out to a restaurant and you got a waiter or a waitress that's tending to your needs, making sure that you are enjoying yourself, making sure that your food is cooked right, your utensils are clean, that making sure that your Sprite or whatever it is you drinking ain't getting down to the bottom, they keeping your drinks fresh. You should appreciate that they are giving you top-notch service. Well, how do you appreciate it? It's going to come a time where you can tip them. You, you want to leave them something to let them know, I uh, appreciate your top-notch service towards me. Sadly, most young folk and some here at this church, they just not good tipples. You, you just don't appreciate when somebody is taking good care of you. Woo. If you ever get married and you got a good spouse, you need to show your appreciation. Take that woman somewhere. Make sure she looking good, smelling good, and feeling good. And some of you young ladies are like, well, I can do that all by myself. Yeah, but it's nothing like when a man will show you his appreciation for how you taking care of him. Accept that you can be top notch. Adhere to folk that are on another level. Soak that game up and learn to appreciate something or somebody that's top notch. And when you look throughout the scripture, you see what I'm telling you is true. You see what I'm teaching on this morning is biblically based. And so let me back it up because I want us to have a real good understanding of how important it is to be top notch and how we should receive other folk that are top notch. Y'all still with me? Let's look at some biblical references. Let's look at Daniel 3 and 29. I'm finna roll. Daniel 3 and 29. Many of us know about who we call the Hebrew boys. And we know about King Nebuchadnezzar threatening their life by throwing them into a fiery furnace if they did not worship the golden image which he had set up. We know that they said we ain't bowing down and he threw them in the fire which he turned up seven times hotter. He threw them in there and then he saw that God was in there with him. But notice what he says in, in Daniel 3.29. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap. Look at this. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Nebuchadnezzar served multiple gods. He served numerous gods, but when he saw that the true and living God was top notch, he passed a law and he said, y'all better not even say anything against the God of these boys because that's how sovereign their God is. Young people, you got to recognize that our God is on another level. The Bible says that there are things that are impossible with men, but they are possible with God. 
And there will come a time in your life to where you will have situations that you can't fix on your own, but you serve a God that's top notch and he can work it out together for your good. You got to realize that God can do anything except fail. There's no disease that he can't heal. There's no habit that he can't help you break. There is no need that he cannot supply. I'm trying to tell you that the God that we serve he is top notch look at somebody and say we serve an awesome God just look at yourself you ought to be getting excited when you look at how God has helped you there were things in your life that you couldn't stop on your own until God stepped in there were things in your life that you couldn't do on your own until God stepped in y'all looking real foreign on this morning but look at somebody and say I serve an awesome God and you got to understand that the God that we serve is on a totally higher level than we are. His ways, Isaiah said, are not like our ways. And so whenever you're facing difficulties, struggles in life, realize that there is no God that can deliver like your God. I said, there is no God that can deliver like your God. He may not deliver the way you want him to deliver, but he will deliver. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Am I right about it? Matthew 13. Look at what Jesus taught. Matthew 13, 45 and 46. Jesus said again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant or a businessman seeking beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. This man recognized how valuable this particular pearl was. He recognized and, and Jesus equates this merchant, this man, to the kingdom of God. You and I, we got to recognize how valuable the things of God are. And once you realize how valuable the things of God are, you should sell out to possess it. You should go all out to line up with the word of God. The man, the Bible says that the man sold all that he had just so he could get that one pearl. And sometimes in your walk with God, you, you got to just go all out. If you're going to possess what God promised that you could possess, it's going to take not some of you, but it's going to take all of you. That's why I don't understand some of us when it comes to our praise and worship. You ain't really gave it your all. You got to give it your all. You, you got to go ahead and clap them hands with all you got. You got to open your mouth with all you got. You got to do your dance with all that you have. Because if, if you go ahead and praise him the way the Bible prescribes, the scripture says that he inhabits the praises of Israel. If I go ahead and just sell out, if I go ahead and just give them all of my mind, all of my mouth, and all of my body who knows what God can do before the end of the day who knows what he'll do before the end of the service but look at somebody say you got to go all out you got to quit holding back when it comes to the things of God you got to realize that if it's going to be done it has to be done according to God's word somebody shout he talking right God is top notch. His ways are top notch. Y'all still with me? Even in the Old Testament, Solomon asked some good questions when it came to the subject at hand. Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? Who can find a virtuous wife? Who can find a woman that's virtuous. Who can find a top-notch woman? See, in the day and time we living in, it's easy to find a slutty woman. 
It's easy to find a gossiping girl. It's easy to find a young girl that, that ain't got no class but showing all her it's easy to find that but Solomon asked a good question who can find a virtuous woman who can find a young girl that'll give God the praise not just with her mouth but with her life where's she at look at somebody and say where's she at who can find her who can find a girl that's virtuous? She got sexual feelings, but she ain't hot in the pants. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find? He's, uh, he's letting us know, look, it's hard to find. But when you find her, look at what he says. Her worth is far above rubies. In other words, he says she top notch. You can find a young girl that got her business together, that got her act right. She know how to worship God. She got good grace. She got good conduct. She know how to clean a kitchen, how to cook a meal, how to cover up her titties. She, who can find her? Her virtue, her life is much far valuable than Ruby. But he was just one hitting on the young ladies over in Proverbs 20 and 6. He said, most men will proclaim his own goodness. And I found that to be true with men in the church and outside the church. Always got something to say at how good that they are, how awesome they are. But look at what he asked. But who can find a faithful man? Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a young man that's living for the Lord? Who can find a young man that's trusting in God? Who can find him? Who can find him? He's letting us know he out there, but can you find him? Yeah, can you find me a young man that hears the word and does the word? Can you find me a young man that will crease up his shoes just to give God some praise? Can you find a man that will bring God his tithe and his offering and then go to work with a smile on his face? Can you find a faithful man? See, Solomon is letting us know, young people, you have what it takes to be top-notch, and if you do, you're going to be a real trendsetter. Because in this world we live in, there's not many virtuous women, and there's not that many faithful men. So you got to have the mindset to say, look, I'm not trying to be like everybody else. I'm trying to be top-notch. I ain't trying to fit in. I'm trying to be who God wants me to be. I'm trying to be who God wants me to be. Top notch. Top notch. That's got to be your mindset. I got a spirit of excellence about me. I enjoy life, but, but I got me some standards. I got me some ethics. It's just certain things I will do. And it's certain things that I will not do. I am top notch. And in our text today, that's who we see Paul writing to the church about. A young man by the name of Timothy. Well, he started with Paul as a young man. Now, now he's, he's older. But, but Paul identifies him as a servant, young people. He said, he served with me in the gospel. But what I really like about how he wrote about Timothy is he said, there was no one like him. Nobody like him. All these folk that Paul had serving with him in ministry, he labels Timothy as being unique, distinct. There's nobody like him. What a good lesson to learn, young people. 
young adults. And all you do, you strive to be your best. In everything you do in life, every aspect of your life, you strive to be to the point to where there's nobody like you. When it comes to you leaving the house, you, you just don't leave the house any old kind of way. Look in any old kind of way. You strive to look your best. You strive to carry yourself the best. You be different. It's easy to find young men showing the crack of their back with their pants down, but you be different. You strive to be and look your best. And our best should be according to God's standard. Notice how Paul said it. Paul said it like this in Colossians 3.23 if you're taking notes. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever you do, whether you're in school, at work, in a relationship, single, whatever you do, you strive to do your best as unto the Lord. If I'm going to be on the praise team, we're going to be a top-notch praise team. It don't matter if God has chosen me to minister to children, teenagers, and young adults. I'm going to be the best youth and young adult praise and worship singer that God has chosen me to be. If my name don't never ring out in the streets, I'm going to be one of the best musicians. I'm going to be one of the best ministers that I can be for my God. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. If I never get an invitation, if I never get invited to do this or to do that, that's not going to hinder me from being and doing my best. Because see, some people are trying to say, well, look, when I get a door open, then. No, no, you're supposed to do it before the door get open. Matter of fact, that's how the door open. Your gift will make room for you. So you got to have the mindset and whatever it is that I do, I'm going to be my best. You don't wait to prom to look your best. You look your best every day or often. Because it's some days I don't feel like doing nothing. And even on them days, I'm going to make sure you don't see me. Leave it on the porch. You ain't going to come and talk to me? No. Back when I was y'all age, many of y'all have heard of Charles Barkley. Let me make sure I'm in the house. How many have heard of Charles Barkley? But see, back when I was y'all age, he was very elite at playing basketball, so much so that he had endorsements coming from everywhere, shoes, uh, uh, drinks, and so forth. And one in particular was deodorant. There's this deodorant called Right Guard. I don't even know if y'all heard of Right Guard. But, but Right Guard, man, that's some powerful deodorant. Man, it got lots of alcohol in it. You put that up under your arms, it's, ah. It's like this stuff I grew up on called Tussie but y'all don't know nothing about that. Anyway, he had this commercial that he sponsored with Right Guard, and the slogan was, anything less would be uncivilized. That's got to be your mindset. I'm striving to give God my best in all I do, and anything less would be uncivilized. Even when I'm hurting in my body, I'm going to be poured out as an offering and I'm still trying to give God my, my best. Look at somebody and say, anything less would be uncivilized. You don't dumb down for nobody. You don't lower your standards for nobody. If folks say, well, you just trying to be too deep, you say, no, you just too shallow. You don't Go down for nobody. If 
I'm right. Somebody shout, he right. And so when we look at Timothy, Paul reveals he had what I call four top-notch traits. We definitely need to manifest these in ministry, but also in life. I'm going to hit both, ministry and in life, because we serve, but we also got a life to live. And God don't want us to just be on our best in the church. He want us to be on our best in every aspect. Four top-notch traits we need to strive to master and demonstrate in our lives. Number one, trustworthiness. What's the first trait? Trustworthiness. When a person is trustworthy, they're dependable. They're loyal, notice, to the word and especially to what they have been taught from the word. I'm loyal to God's word and I'm loyal to what I've been taught. The scripture says in verse number 19, Paul said, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy. Paul was to the point to where he was led to send Timothy to do an assignment because he was trustworthy. You want to be the type of young man or young woman that's trustworthy. When it comes to God's house, young people, your pastor should be able to trust you. Your pastor should be able to put you on assignment and trust that you're going to do not what you want to do, but you're going to do based upon what you've been taught according to God's word. You should be able to trust you. Your pastor should be able to say, look, I'm going to let you handle it. I'm going to leave the choice up to you. That's basically saying I'm trusting you to do the right thing. And for Paul to say he didn't have nobody like that around him, but Timothy, that's saying something. That's saying something. But, but when we consider the MSW again, your pastor should be able to trust you. To be able to trust that if you go be down to pray, you're going to get up there and ain't going to be scared. You're going to let the Lord have his way. You're not going to be intimidated. If all you can pray is five minutes and 15 seconds, we're going to feel the glory in five minutes and 15 seconds. But if all you got is one minute and 35 seconds, that 135 is going to be powerful in the Lord. I should be able to trust you as a pastor. Put you on assignment and you're going to do what you've been taught. Look, you got five minutes to receive that offering. That's all you got at MSW. You got five minutes. Well, can't we work? No, 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 and no. Five minutes. And we trusting you to let the Lord use you in how many minutes? That's it. But not just in the church, young people, in every area of your life. Because sometimes we can do it, we can do it right in the church because there's a lot of eyes on us. But are you trustworthy when you're outside the church and it ain't a lot of people there to see your choices? Are you trustworthy on the job to where they don't have to worry about you hooking up all your friends? or stealing for your friends. Because that's what the hookup is. Especially if you're giving it to them for, for free. That's showing up the hookup. Look how y'all looking at me. I know I'm telling the truth. Y'all can't fool me. I used to work at this store called Blockbuster. I don't even know if y'all know what Blockbuster is. Before Netflix, before Hulu, before Amazon, you used to have to go to a store 
to get the movie you wanted. And, and, and I worked at such a store. I would get out of school. I had early release because I had a job. I would get paper. But check this out. It was so long ago that, that minimum wage back then was 385. Three eighty five. What is minimum wage now? I got one of them back in the day stories. Three eighty five. But Blockbuster started us out at five twenty five. Yeah, they started us off top notch. And man, I used to be on that register. I, my managers could trust me. I, I come to work when they told me I could come. And, and I didn't have a car, but I stayed three miles from Blockbuster. So it got to the point to where if they needed somebody at the last minute and I wasn't playing ball, they could send somebody to my house, pick me up, come in, clock in, do what I need to do, and then they drop me off. But man, let me tell you something. I used to have a lot of friends back in high school, and they come through there. Hook me up, baby. Hook me up, man. Put such, 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 such. Just hook me up. And uh, man, we had these cameras. I was like, man, you see them camera right there? <laughs> you trying to get me locked up? You have to be trustworthy. Even though you and your parents don't see eye to eye, you still need to be somebody that they can, they can trust. You need to be somebody that they, your mama can leave her purse right there in her own house, come back, get a purse, and her belongings are still in there. You need to be the type of person that can be trusted. Don't do like I used to do. Mama would give me house rules, and I'd be like, yes, ma'am, right in her face. But then behind her back, I break the rules. She would tell me, nobody in this house when I ain't here? Yes, ma'am. But guess who I would have in the house? Some of everybody. Man, I, back in my heathen days, I was sunk. Yeah, in my heathen days, I was, <laughs> I was a mess. I had this one particular person over the house. They weren't supposed to be over the house. And uh, mama came home. This separate from the other story I told you. This ain't, this ain't even that, this separate. I thought about taking that off YouTube, that was so bad, but, but, but this was separate. Man, I had this uh, special friend over the house, and um, we were down in the basement, and man, I heard that garage come up. I was like, oh, snap, but I ain't say that. I was like, man, I can't go up the steps because it's one way in and one way out. And I actually took the bars off the window and pushed my special friend out the window and said, look, go on down the street and I'll meet you in about 15 minutes. And it was in the winter time. Heathen, man, just heathen. Ain't you glad the Lord saved me? <laughs> I wasn't trustworthy. I wasn't trustworthy the way I needed to be. But here Paul is given a great trait that we need to have. Look at somebody say, you got to be trustworthy. 1 Corinthians 16.10 in part says about Timothy, for he does the work of God or of the Lord as I also one way you become trustworthy, young people, is you learn to take on your pastor's spirit. When you see your pastor doing the will of God, you imitate that. You do it just like your pastor would do it. And when you're doing that, you're demonstrating that I can be, I can be trusted. I can be trusted. Because I'm not going to try to add to or take away. I'm just going to do it the way you would do it. How many are understanding? I'm just going to do it the way you would do it. When it comes to your family, 
You just do based upon how your parents taught you if it was right. Well, this is what mama said. This is what daddy said. It's right. I'm just going to do it the way they told me to do it. I don't always like it, but I'm just going to do it the way they told me to do it so it'll be well with me. And then if God ever allow you to have those conversations sometimes, you can just tell my, well, I did it the way you told me to do. Respectfully, I did it the way you told me to do. Number two, Timothy was like-minded. Trustworthiness, and he also had like-mindedness. Like-mindedness, being together, having the same spirit, unity. Paul said in Philippians 3.16, young folk, let us walk by the same what? Rule, let us have the same, let us have the same mind. When it comes to serving in ministry, you need to have the same mindset as your shepherd. Have the same mindset. Same mindset. We start on time, I start on time. Whether it's 50 folk here or no folk here. You know, sometime on Tuesdays, folks are late coming in, but guess what? We still start on time. You got to have that same mindset. Then when you leave the church, you break the mold because folk like to say black folk don't never be on time. You be on time in the church, but then outside the church, you are on what? <laughs> you are on time. Why y'all acting like y'all ain't never heard that before? People be saying, man, what you on, CPT time? Color people time? You take what God has taught you and you apply it to the other areas of your life. Like-mindedness. Then, when you get to a certain level in your life to where you want to get engaged or you thinking about marriage, look, you got to link up with folk that have the same mindset. You accustomed to going to church and getting the word, you just don't get with somebody just because they're cute, fine, and so forth. You need to be going down that list and say, do they go to church consistently to get a word like I do? You don't want to hook up with a young man or a young woman that just want to go to church just because you going. I only go because you go. That, that, that ain't no like-mindedness. You want to have the mindset to where if they don't go to God's house to worship, you still, you still going to go. You got a like mind. I joke with my wife. Sometimes I, I wake up. I say, man, I got church today. What you doing? I'm going to service. What you doing? And she said, well, I'm going too. Well, well we're we going together. But it's about being with people that have the same, same mindset. You take that same mindset to your life. You say, well, I ain't thinking about no marriage. I ain't thinking about getting engaged. Well, look at your peers. Look at who you hang with. Are y'all on, do y'all have the same mindset? Are y'all thinking about the same thing, trying to be productive. Look, look, look at what the circle you keep. Because you are a picture of who you hang around. The Bible says it like this. If you walk with a wise person, you're going to be wise. We can flip it. If you are the companion or the friend of a fool, you're going to die. Because fools die for lack of knowledge. So look at who you're hanging with. Do that with me. Say, look at who you hanging with. Man, y'all ain't even put no elbow grease in. Say, look at who you hanging with. Yeah. Y'all on the same level? Y'all got the same mindset? You trying to live right, but they mind is always on booty. You, yeah, it, some ain't, it, 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 it ain't mixing. It ain't mixing. You trying to quit smoking, and all they want to do is smoke. That don't, that, 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 that like-mindedness is not where it need to be. This ain't going to get no loud amen, but I'm all in the Bible. And so what happens is when you mature, you, you have to start making the necessary changes that you need to make. 
Don't wait on nobody else. You do it because it's right. Third trait, genuineness. Trustworthiness, like-mindedness. Number three, genuineness. Notice Paul said that he sincerely cared for the state of the people. When a person is really genuine, they real, but most importantly, Timothy had love. Timothy loved folk. He cared about folk. And as disciples, as saints, we have to have or should have love one toward another. Don't go to the same church and the same school and you don't even speak to one another. Have some love. Even if you don't hang out, at least speak. What's happening? Good to see you. And keep it moving. Because you may not be tight like that. That's okay. But just be real. Be genuine. Now, let me go another way with this. Because you can be loving. You can be real. You can be genuine. You can try to help people. But notice, sometimes in life and in ministry, people will brush you off, ignore you, neglect you, and even be ungrateful towards you. But don't you let that stop you from being genuine or sincere. Don't you let that stop you. Just because somebody stomp all on you and your ideas, don't you let that stop you. Just because you get overlooked sometime or, or, or things don't go the way you so desire in life, don't you let that stop you from being genuine and real towards people. Because sometimes, young folks, you can get bitter when folk don't treat you the way you treat them. And I come to let you know, that's just life. It just happens that way. Sometimes folk, they just, they just be folk. But it happens. You can be the nicest one in here, but, but it's still going to be somebody that just, they funny. Y'all ever seen somebody like that? Or have you ever been like that? I've been both. When you look in the scripture, you, you see that David was neglected by his own parents. He was disrespected by his own brothers. He was overlooked by Israel. I mean, he just was just always kind of like cast off. But David did not let that stop him from being genuine. He still stepped up to the plate and served the Lord. Saul was trying to kill David on numerous occasions, but David did not let that stop him from showing respect to the king. He had an opportunity to kill Saul one night, snuck into his camp, and while Saul was sleeping, he had one of his hitters with him. And, and he said, look, let me take this stake, David, right now and let me pin him to the ground. David said, no, this is the Lord's anointing. And all that time, Saul had a hit on David. He tried to kill him a number of times, but he didn't let that stop him from being genuine or sincere. Jesus had 10 lepers come before him one day. He healed all of them. Only one came back and showed gratitude. But Jesus didn't let that stop him from being sincere, loving, and caring about folk. And I'm going to tell you something. It takes something. It takes something to keep loving folk that are hard to love. But, but I want to encourage somebody, what makes you top notch is when you can do right even when other folk choose not to do right. And that has to be your mindset. I'm not going to return evil for evil. I'm going to overcome evil with good. 
I'm top notch. We say it like this. You just got to learn how to be the bigger the bigger person. And some of you say, well, why I always got to be the bigger person? Because that's God's will for your life. He wants you to mature. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to put away childish things. And sometimes you just got to be the bigger person. You got to learn how not to say nothing. Let your words be few. Because sometimes you be feeling some kind of way. But you don't let that stop you from being sincere or genuine. Finally, or shall I say the next one, which is the last one, should be four, is holiness. Paul said about Timothy as I close, you know his proven character. His proven character, letting us know that he had a holy lifestyle. That's what makes you a trendsetter, young people, when your lifestyle is holy. Your character lines up with God's word in the church and outside the church. And let me tell you something, because of what God has done for us, that should motivate us to want to live right. All of what the Lord has done for us, I should strive to just be a living sacrifice. He died for me? Man, I, I, my motivation is just to live the way he want me to live. He been too good to me. Been too good. And when I think about Sister Linda Allman and how she would battle in her body, I remember talking to her. She'd be like, look, I got to get out this bed and come back and serve these young folks. I was like, girl, you need to get your rest. She, she was just determined to be used by God, even though she was going through in her body. Man, Sister Linda was a holy woman of God. She wasn't flawless. She wasn't perfect. But this woman loved the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And she was, was such a good example for young people and young adults in her day. She didn't play. She didn't play. Man, she would be going through things with her family. She'd be like, I need to meet with your pastor. What's going on, man? This, that, and the third is going on. You know I don't play. That was she. <laughs> you know I don't play. You got to be holy. Even as a young person, Peter said, be ye holy for I am holy. And that's what makes us different. When you go to your college campus and you live in the way God has told you to live, you top notch. You making a difference on your job when you live the way God has told you to live it's not that you striving to be better you just are better you top notch it should be a noticeable difference your character should be proof and so when you consider these four traits about Timothy trustworthiness like-mindedness what was the third one? genuineness what was the last one holiness when you look at Timothy's life you can only conclude that he was top-notch but it shouldn't just be in Timothy's life it should also be in our life how many receive the word well I'm gonna stop right there let's give God a hand clap for the scripture and the service.